Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage. Welcome back to episode 57 of Europa Universalis 4. The end of the last video, we just actually finished one war against um, against Siena uh, so that we could take Nice. And uh, instantly we've ended up finding ourselves in a, uh, another war because Brandenburg called, um, called us in to help them, which we are going to do. Now I need to try and put my regiments back together in this sort of 10-4-6 configuration that, that I quite like, so we can do that. Uh, we've got a 9-4-4 here, so this one is uh, is almost complete. Um, we need to make sure that we do have some men down in Nice until that's sorted out. So I'm going to move those guys down there. I'm going to move everybody else up, simply because we are going to be dealing with... Um, Austria in this fight, possibly. Uh, you guys can now all mothball. That is going to save us a huge amount of money. Um, I sent another one down here. Um, if I go to Portugal, do I want to stay friends with Portugal? Probably don't. I want to sell ships to you, though. I'd like to sell you this heavy. Um, you would not be willing to buy it from me. Wow. Wow. You'd be willing to give me next to no money for it. Do you know what? I'm not even going to sell it. If you, I know it's it's going to really annoy me having one odd number. I guess I could build four more. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to give it to you for practically nothing. Now, obviously, Brabant are going off and fighting some wars on their own. As I've already said, I, I'm trying to recover manpower, trying to recover some money. I don't really want to get involved in this war too heavily but i will if i have to uh defend brandenburg because of course i don't want brandenburg take uh, taking heavy losses because they are my ally at some point i'll most likely um want them to take losses because i'll be going up against them uh, but for the time being they're fine so we're going to select this smaller unit so now we've got our sort of proper 20 stack there and we'll go ahead and build up some of the uh, some of the others that we want now, we were getting war reparations from Austria, and I think what happens now, because we're back in a war with them again... Oh, no, we're not actually in the war with Austria. Austria's not involved in this one. That's good. Well, I suppose it's because the Allies haven't all been called in, and the Commonwealth is part of this war. Uh, Brandenburg's actually got quite big. Hadn't realised just how big Brandenburg were. Um, yeah, Brandenburg are actually getting pretty scary. Brandenburg don't need my help. Brandenburg are actually fighting... Yeah, the Commonwealth's on the same side, I think. So I don't have to worry too much about them. Obviously, we do have some units down here that are um, suicidal, I believe, is the technical term. Um, so, yeah, you, you can go. Oh, we've got a good stack there. Well, that's the stack that I just put together, I think. Um, let's go ahead and put you guys all together. Now, bear in mind, we do have some stacks that are a little bit fragmented because... Um, Let's grab that one ship that's on its own, mothball it, and add it to the group. Um, I was sort of uh, detaching sieges and merging units together, so it's, it is a little bit of a mess. We'll, we'll sort of keep keep some guys up in Luxembourg, I think. Gain some uh, population there. There we go. Why have we got a group of 41 here? That seems a, a little bit over. Um... Seems like, well, we had an extra two, I think, in one regiment, didn't we? Uh, but we could just go ahead and um, split this perfectly. And that gives that gives us 11-4-6 in both of them, as opposed to 10-4-6, uh, which is fine. It's always better to have uh, slightly more infantry, because the infantry help with, um, you know, they provide a front line. Let's look at the provincial unrest. Mostly in Nice, as we'd expect. Uh, also Wallace. I forgot, of course, that uh, we, we took Wallace. I need to call that. Completely forgot about that, so let's go ahead and uh, put some troops in Wallace as well. It is nice because if we do get any rebels popping here, it is the mountains, so we'll automatically um, sort of uh, do quite a huge ton of damage to those guys. And we'll keep these guys up north just so that we can deal with any, any rubbish that might pop up down there. Um, what else are we going to have in Provincial Unrest? Yeah, we know about Nice, Valencia, Wallace, Lindenberg, not, or Limburg, not too bad. Obviously, we've got to pay these loans off as well. So, we're going to avoid spending too much money for the time being. And we are still, very slowly, but getting there, uh, integrating Brabant. So, we'll allow that to carry on. But, uh, yeah, looking at Brandenburg now. Um, Great Britain has announced France as their new rival. Wow, have Britain grown? Last time I uh, checked, I couldn't rival them. Uh, if that situation has changed, you cannot add a rival. Oh, I'm at war. Okay, well, when we're not at war, we'll see if we can rival uh, Britain. And um, 
obviously they're going to be the next uh, the next people that we go to war against. I don't think they've they've entered into a coalition against us. I don't think they had enough aggressive expansion. Um, yeah, it's only minus 13. I mean, if, if we get any aggressive expansion, it's going to be here with Austria and the HRE, which is kind of expected, to be honest. Uh, Brandenburg don't even care. Um, so it's literally mainly going to be Austria, Milan, and a little bit of sort of North Germany, Denmark. Um, no, Denmark don't care all that much either. Holland, Netherlands, a little bit. Nobody really cares. Probably should take Holland at some point. Getting, getting Holland would give us such massive trade power, it's probably really worth doing that. Uh, gain 1 stability, 25 prestige and 40 admin, or gain 10 army tradition, 10 navy tradition and 100 military power. I'm already capped on stability, so I'm going to take the army and navy tradition, because that'll be really, really nice. Thinking that maybe we should go ahead and um, fabricate some claims. Uh, although they've, they've pieced out already, that's fantastic. So now they've pieced out... We can go ahead and set Great Britain as our rival. And that also then means we can go ahead and issue an embargo against them. We can go over here to Holland and we can... Yeah, we'd never be able to annex them, would we? Not a chance of that happening. Uh, vassalization. No, because they're an elector. So what we want to do is, in covert actions, fabricate a claim against whichever one is closest to us. Antwerp. So we'll grab that. Obviously, we'd like to try and grab as much of it as possible, because they do have... It's not Antwerpen, I don't think. Uh, yeah, Antwerpen has a, an important centre of trade. Um, Zealand uh, doesn't, but Holland does. Um... Rhine Estuary, an important centre of trade. Antwerpen, important centre of trade. So they, they do have some very, very nice uh, land that we could grab. And they are going to be almost completely cut off once we've grabbed Brabant anyway. So that will be uh, that'll be really good for us there. I'm glad that that war has kind of ended because that now uh, sorts things out with us. Uh, I should probably also make sure that we are... Um... And we get a royal marriage with Corsica when it's a duchy. It's very strange. But we'll go ahead uh, and do that. And we will... Um, we've converted some more heretics. And we also want to improve our relations so that we will eventually be able to integrate them. At the same time, let us... Um, right, well, these conversions are going to take quite a while, aren't they? But let us, let us get cracking with them. Uh, when can we go and improve relations? 29th, 27th, 28th, 29th. Improve relations. Off you go. Never have too much grain. Uh, still only over by one diplomatic relation. Not too terrible. And that'll be fine once we've integrated Brabant anyway. Um, Rebel Uprisings. 3.2 years. Mainly Savoyard Nationalists. Mainly going to be in these. Follis, though. Not all that bothered about it. Flemish Nationalists. 300 and odd years. Yeah, fine. Um, Reform Zealots. 17 years. Yeah, I don't think there's an awful lot to worry about there. I'm not going to bother reducing the war exhaustion. It should go down on its own. Rather not spend the Diplo. We'll just leave it to uh, to decay naturally. That should be fine. And uh, obviously we want to get these loans paid off. Uh, we can uh, certainly repay at least one of them. How many have we got? We've actually got three. Um, so we'll play, pay off the earliest one. Didn't realise I had that many lo loans. Uh, we've been discovered fabricating against Holland. We are going to have to be very careful with our aggressive expansion because obviously getting caught increases it and it makes us more likely to end up in a um, uh, or the target of a coalition. I should probably think about... Um, now, are there any important centres of trade? London is an important centre of trade and it's the Thames Estuary. I don't think there are any other important centres of trade around... Um, yeah, I mean, it would be easy. What's that? Our oh, religious centre. It's much easier, of course, if I just click on the um, trade map mode and then I can see where the important centres of trade are. Uh, there's one up here. Um, but yeah, I think uh, what we'd be better off doing is maybe just trying to grab some more of the south coast because it gives us more of a, 
uh, a beachhead and it makes it more difficult for England or Great Britain to field a decent sized navy. So that's probably the, the best way of doing things down there. Um, what's this? Occupied by the Hanzo. Wow, you're, um, you're really out of your way, aren't you, down there? How are things going with everybody else? Um, looks like Castile's kind of stalled. I mean, I take credit for doing most of that myself by uh, stopping them from ever forming Spain. Golden Horde seems to be shrinking a bit. It does look like Russia is starting to recover and fight back, which is nice. Uzbek's quite nasty. So are the Timurids. Um, Uzbek's still kind of cutting Russia in half. Um, Korea's doing all right. Yeah, nothing of great concern to me here, to be honest. So just keep trying to um, pay off those debts. And obviously we've got a, this, this little bit of France over here now. And we need to keep trying to expand. Hopefully our... Um, hopefully our colonial nations are going to keep sort of taking land where they can. And, and sort of expanding onwards. We're going to keep trying to sort of push against England. And, and cut as many of their provinces off as possible. We're, we're grabbing a lot of the area. And it's really, really good for us. So... Royal marriage offer from the Hess. Um, how come we can all of a sudden marry people who are part of um, duchies? Is that something to do with the admin tech that I took? That I missed? Um, not too sure. Maybe it was something that I grabbed. Really weird. Anyway, we got the option of being able to invest in a new idea. Which is going to be our diplomatic idea. Now it'll cost reduce the cost of war exhaustion reduction, but at the same time, I am um, ahead of uh, behind time on diplotech. Do we want to go for the diplotech? I think we'll save up for it. To be honest, of course we. Well, I was going to say we could buy a few. Uh, a few structures, but given the fact that we've got a couple of loans that we want to get paid off, we should be making fairly decent money now, though. Mm, still not a massive amount. 20 per per month. Could be a lot better. Not too sure why it's so high. Let's have a quick look. Uh, army maintenance. Army maintenance is quite high. I'll give you that. Fleet maintenance is also quite high. Uh, and colonial maintenance. I guess we could drop the army maintenance a little. Uh, Austria no longer considers France a rival, and they're no longer considered a valid rival for me. They've got a demand for unlawful territory from Bohemia. Uh, you can go and do yourself. Um, so who can I rival now? I can't rival Austria anymore. I can only rival Portugal, which I don't want to. I'll now probably have... Was I even embargoing Austria? Uh, revoke, revoke embargo. Yeah. Got to remove that, otherwise we'll have a costly embargo. Uh, we'll we'll save on that one for the time being. Now, I've got to be careful with my um, army maintenance. I wish you could actually set army maintenance on individual regiments or individual armies, like you can with navies, because, I mean, obviously you can't adjust the... Um, you can't adjust the maintenance slider individually for individual navies, but you can at least mothball ones that you're not using. Because what I'd like to be able to do is take some of my armies, put them right in the middle of the country where it's nice and safe, and sort of mothball them so I'm paying reduced maintenance on them. Uh, and um, keep my sort of armies that are on the front lines or my armies that are overseas at full maintenance. Now, I've spoken to this about people before and they've always said, yeah, but it's a little bit gamey because, you know, ships are ships. It's a physical object. You can put a ship in, into mothballs and not spend any money to maintain it. Well, that's true, but you can also separately fund armies. It's perfectly fine for me to have armies stationed at home that are on a limited budget and aren't very well supplied and have an army overseas that gets better equipment and more supplies. It does make sense, but, you know, at the end of the day, that's just the way the game is. Uh, since the game's changed, I actually don't like reducing my army maintenance. As much as it saves you a lot of money, uh, you do end up with the problem where um, if a uh, rebellion fires and you're only at partial morale, um, then you're in trouble. And also, I think the AI is more inclined to attack you if you don't have your armies at full morale. Because it does take a little bit of time to get back uh, to morale. Uh, let's go ahead and um, repay another loan. So there's only one loan left. 
Um, just we've got to get, end up with loads of these CBs, mainly because of all the colonial expansion. Um, the only potential rebel uprising is still these uh, Savoyan nationalists, and we're looking at two years on that. So it is very possible that it could pop. It's not the end of the world if it does, because I think we can handle them. So we'll allow that to carry on. Expiring CB, a diplomatic insult, not too bothered about that. 85.1% uh, of the way through the integration of Brabant. It's actually going up quite slowly. We've probably lost a fair bit of Diplo. Rep. No, it's not too bad. Obviously, we're a little bit overextended. Is that overextension not going away? Have I missed, uh, missed a province somewhere? Um, stability and expansion. No, Nice is, uh, nice is almost done. And uh, Volis won't be too long behind it. So then the overextension will go away. And uh, so will some of that rebellion, actually. Um... Tensions along our border with Great Britain has given us a claim on the province of Wessex. Oh, fine, wonderful. So we've we've just gained we've gained an automatic um, uh, CB against. Uh, well, no, an automatic claim uh, against Wessex. Fantastic, because um, that's the next pro province that I want to take. Uh, nice is now considered part of our territory. Um, gain zero point five inflation for fifty diplo, or gain ten diplo. Well, we don't want the um, we don't want the inflation. We've already got some of that. Uh, how are things going now that Nice has... Um... Wow, Nice has now just jumped up again, I think. Volis is pretty low. Still 1.7 years. If they pop, they pop and we'll we'll just fight them. Um, these zealots here. Barra. No, I think we're going to be fine. Cancel the right to military access. Invest in a new tech, which is the Diplo. Let's go ahead and grab that. Now we're ahead of time on everything, which makes me feel happier. Still, ho still have too many diplomatic relations, but that won't be the case once we've managed to... Um... I just wondered like, why all of a sudden it said we were at 138 point something percent. Uh, but we have managed to uh, integrate them. That gives us a big bash to our diplomatic reputation, of course. Which means we won't be able to integrate anyone else for a while. But that does change a few things. It will change the limit of our forces. In fact, we're still not at our max limit. And what composition did you have there? Six, a 6 2 nothing. Um, that's fine. You can probably stay as a 6 2 nothing, to be honest. Um, you're a bit of a weedy army, though. I might just, I might just put, fool you in with that big stack there. Um, I didn't even realise that we had uh, Limburg. When did we grab that? Or did... Did somebody give that to Brabant and I hadn't even noticed it? Um, military access, yes, for everybody. Just need to try and take Legion now. Legion are completely surrounded by me. There's absolutely no way that we'd ever manage to um, vassalize them, I don't think. No, because they're an elector. So we've got one of the electors for the HRE completely surrounded by our territory. Um, plus 5% tariff on Nouvelle Flandre or... Yeah, we'll just tax it. Getting better tariffs. Let's have a look at the tariffs, actually. It's been a while since we've looked at our overseas subjects. Because Nouvelle Flandre are getting a little bit of uh, liberty desire. We don't want that to get um, too high. And you can see one of the reasons for that is because they 32.3% relative power to France. What that basically means is that they're getting quite big. And as they get bigger, they'll feel stronger and more likely to ask for independence. So you do have to be careful when feeding um a lot of provinces to these uh colonial uh, nations because they may decide to try and break free from you but they trust us obviously things are hurt a little bit by our diplomatic uh, relations and stuff but as it says at the bottom liberty desire represents the country's desire for independence they may turn rebellious if their liberty desire is over 50 percent it's already at 47 they're quite big. So what I'm going to do is decrease the tariffs. It'll cost me 100 admin points. And it'll decrease the tariffs by 5%. But it says it will decrease their liberty desire by 0%. So decreasing the tariffs isn't even going to help me. So if that's the case, I'm not going to do that. And we'll leave it be. Bear in mind, if they try to become independent, they have to go to war with me. And I could easily ship some troops over there and do them a fair bit of damage if I need to. I could also release one of my colonial subjects if I want to and play as one of them. And that could be quite fun. 
Uh, maybe we should make a save game and then later on at some point consider um, playing as uh, Nouveau Flonde. Because they're very big, they're very powerful, and um, I guess what we could do as well is uh, improve our relations over here. Because that might be an idea. It's something that we haven't really done. I haven't considered sucking up to my colonial nations. And it's probably a good idea. Um, so, we're not currently in any wars. We've got a few CBs that we can act on. Uh, there's another colony that has become self-sustaining. Which is... Uh, is it this one? It is indeed. So, let's move up here. Can't move into this one because this one is Terra Incognita. Which is uh, a little bit annoying. Because I don't actually have a, uh, a, a conquistador anymore. At least I don't think that I do. No, I don't have a conquistador. Which means I can't go up there and grab that one. Which is a little bit annoying. Um, we'll leave it for now then. We'll just continue working off uh, in this direction. So that's not too bad. So we're not in any uh, wars currently. We have managed to um, gain some CBs. And we've managed to gain some territory. And all in all, things aren't going too bad. But I think that that is a brilliant point to end the episode so thanks a lot for watching guys i hope you are still enjoying europa universalis 4 and i'll see you next time so until then goodbye for now